this. Later. I do it later.
God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for all of your sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. first lesson comes from Proverbs 25, verses 6 and 7. What's the most humbling experience you've ever had in your life? You don't need to share if you don't want to, but have you all had one? Were they fun? If I can briefly share my conference wrestling tournament senior year, wrestling was the only sport I was ever any good at. If I pinned the guy I was wrestling in the last match, my team wins the conference tournament. If I lose, we lose the conference tournament. I'm up against a guy that I was pretty evenly matched with. Made a mistake. He rolled me over and was forcing me to go back for the pin and had cranked my head into such a position that I was staring at my coach and my entire team over here while I was losing the match. Oh, that was not fun. I, need, I needed to be humble. Sometimes we need to be humble. And that's often when we're thinking of ourselves more highly than we are. And Solomon, well, his words in Proverbs here are going to find an echo in the words of Jesus in our gospel lesson. Don't think of yourself too high. Instead, trust God and lean only on his glory. We read, do not honor yourself in a king's presence. Do not stand in a place reserved for great people. 
Because it is better to be told, come up here, than for you to be humiliated before a ruler whom your eyes have seen. So part of the reading. We continue by singing the psalm of the day, Psalm 139a, found on page 116 in the front part of the video. <laughs>
in us God's very nature. But we don't always think that way, do we? Yeah, that's the problem. That's the problem. That's the problem. That's the problem. God has a bit of a sense of humor. Uh, I've experienced and heard stories of other people experience it. You know, like when you go to church and you go, nice. She's too humble. She's shy. Memento mori. Well, when Roman generals would come, they would be given a huge victory parade in Rome. They would start up the Appian Way on the west coast of Italy, all the way up to Rome, and the Roman citizens would line the way shouting uh, praise to this general, and he would lead captives in front of him and he would have his entire army marching in front of him and all of the citizenry of Rome it would see would show up for this parade to cheer on this conquering general and in his chariot with him was a man whispering memento mori memento mori literally remember death remember you are mortal remember you are not a god now, none of us are conquering generals, but all of us do consider ourselves gods from time to time. Maybe not quite that boldly, but I do good. I am a good person. I do the things I ought to do, and I don't do the things I ought not to do. You think thoughts like this all the time. Memento Pecunia. Memento pecunia. Remember sin. For you are a sinner. And only one who knows the weight of their sin can humble themselves before God and admit, I have nothing good in me. And realize that all that is good comes from their God. That's the lesson Jesus tried to teach the Pharisees. It's a lesson we need to learn too. We read, one Sabbath day, when Jesus went to the house of the leader of the Pharisees to eat bread, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how they were selecting the places of honor, he told the invited guests a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline in the place of honor, or perhaps someone more distinguished than you may have been invited by him. The one who invited both of you may come and tell you, give this man your place. Then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and recline in the lowest place, so that when the one who invited you comes, he will tell you, friend, move up to a higher place. Then you will have honor in the presence of all who are reclining at the table with you. Yes, everyone who exalts himself will be humble, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. He also said to the one who had invited him, When you make a dinner or a supper, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, so that perhaps they may also return the favor and pay you back. But when you make a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be called blessed because they cannot repay you. Certainly you will be repaid in the resurrection of the righteous. So far the reading. <laughs> Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, 
True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with him 524. <coughs> change, the more they stay the same. 
the people to whom this letter was written might seem to have a good case for arguing against that. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Based on this question, if things were different, how different would they be? The answer is probably a paradox. Completely. And not at all. What's the name of this book? Hebrews. Hebrews. So to whom is this letter written? To the Hebrews. To the Hebrews. <laughs> Jewish believers. That is important to understand. If you are going to understand anything in this book, you have to first understand the audience to whom it was written, because these are people who have experienced perhaps the greatest ecclesiastical transition in the history of the world, at the very least, the most rapid one. Martin Luther's Reformation is arguably second, but what these people went through is definitely first. Think about what happened in their lifetimes. These people grew up, they spent their lives going to temple, going to synagogue, making their daily, their weekly, their monthly, their annual sacrifices. These were people who went on annual pilgrimages to Jerusalem every single year. And then one Friday afternoon, right before the Pentecost, uh, right before the Passover Seder, there was an earthquake. And the temple and the curtain ripped in half. The curtain and the temple ripped in half. And the entire world changed. There were no more sacrifices. There were no more pilgrimages. There were no more of those stacks of laws that the Jewish people had to follow from their God. All of that was done away with because what they were prefiguring, prefiguring had taken place. All of those things were to point to Jesus. They were to point to the Savior. They were to point to the one who was to come while well, he came and he fulfilled his work. He suffered. He died. He then rose again. And these Jewish Christians, no more sacrifices, no more pilgrimages, no more of those endless laws that you read about in books like Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy. All of that was gone now. And yet the writer to the Hebrews says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you were one of these Jewish Christians, you might very well have scoffed at that. No, he isn't. Everything's changed. Has everything changed for you? Hats, let's face it. We got some TVs here. Our worship music comes from a computer. We have another computer over there hooked up to a camera that's recording the service so you can watch it on TV this week and broadcast it out to whoever's not able to make it. And then, you know what? It's going to be posted on the internet where literally anyone in the world can watch what we're doing here. That's different. I'm not standing in a pulpit right now. How many pastors have you had that never used the pulpit? Just me? What? Another one? Uncommon, though, right? It's uncommon, though. Things are different. I'm not wearing a robe right now. It's different. And we do things in worship that, at least I've been told, have never been done here before. Like the accompaniment we have occasionally from Koine, things like that. That 
That wasn't a common occurrence before, was it? Things are different. You ever find yourself wishing that they weren't? You ever wish for the good old days? Someone wants to find nostalgia as remembering prices from 40 years ago without remembering wages from 40 years ago. And there's some truth to that. But let's face it, for many of you, many of you are older than I am, the way we do worship here is completely different than the way it was done when we grew up, right? Do you ever miss it? The old ways, the old days, things have changed. Why? Yeah, Charlie? I was going to say things may change, but the old word of the Lord is the same. Do you guys hack my computer? <laughs> <laughs> Charlie's taking my place. I'm getting so annoyed with you guys jumping about half a paragraph ahead of me in my sermons. Am I am I preaching that obviously? Do I need to change it up a little bit? Or are you guys just that well trained? Well, yeah, you're absolutely right. All of these changes can cause you to be a little uncomfortable, a little discomfited. And you might think, why can't things just stay the way they were? Well, they don't. They never do. And if anyone had a right to complain that way, it was these Hebrew believers, because everything had literally changed. Me standing here as opposed to over there, TVs in front, music from our organ or from the computer, at the end of the day, those aren't really big deals, are they? It, it's not really changing anything. What needs to stay the same is what is being preached. Because what we have, that message, is the through line throughout all history. From the falling to sin, which you learn and will be learning about next week, until today, everything has been the same. The same truth has been held out in front of everyone from Adam and Eve to you and I today. You are a sinner. You have done what God does not want you to do. You have not done what God wants you to do. And you have a Savior. Jesus Christ is your Savior. That doesn't change. And God willing, that will never change in this building. The love we have for the Word of God, the love we have for our Savior, our understanding of who we are in relationship to our Savior will never change. Yeah, the way we do things may be a little bit different occasionally. We may adapt to try to be more friendly to people who are coming in here for the first time so that they don't get thrown off by things and instead want to hold fast to the interesting and true things they have heard about their God. That all may happen. And to your credit, this congregation has been pretty, pretty good about dealing with all of that. But what will never change is the simple truth that we cling to every single day. Jesus Christ is your Savior from your sins and your only path to heaven. Pastors change. The way we preach changes. The things we use in our worship changes. But even as those change, the one thing that will always stay the same is our Savior. And as long as we cling fully, totally, and only to him, what else will never change is the truth that you have a home in heaven. And there you will experience the greatest change of all time. All the bad things gone, and nothing but God's grace and peace and mercy 
held out for you forever. And that is a change. We can all look forward to it. Amen. Now may the grace of God which transcends all human understanding. Guard and keep your hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise and join together in singing the created me. <laughs> rise we continue with the prayer of the church we pray lord of power and grace whose eyes are on the righteous and whose ears are open to their cry hear the prayer of your people as we come now in thankfulness for the mercies that you pour down on us anew each day thank you for the gifts of your mighty providence make us mindful O lord that you have provided us with life breath and being and are the source of our daily bread we praise you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be the Savior of the world. Grant that we may believe in him with all our hearts, learning from him the great truths of the kingdom, to which he bore faithful witness. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may produce the fruits of righteousness. May he endow us with unwavering faith, that we may always be ready to do your will. We pray for the nations of the earth, subdue terror and tyranny everywhere, and call forth leaders who acknowledge that you are Lord over all the earth. Bless our own land, and may it ever follow that which is good, and turn from all that which is wicked, that our people may prosper in uprightness and integrity. Hear, O Lord, our cry for those who are afflicted. Grant them health in body and soul, and save them for your mercy's sake. And Lord, we ask that you be with our brothers and sisters in Broken Bow. As Pastor Nancis has returned the call, they are meeting together to, hold, to call a new pastor on September 29th. Please give them wisdom and guidance so that they may call the leader who will best serve their congregation. Lord, you know who that man is. Let them see that man and let them call him. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petition. Guide and uphold us in, during our pilgrimage in this world, and bring us all to our heavenly home. Receive these petitions in the name of the Prince of Life, Jesus our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. <laughs> Thanks to the Lord our God. <laughs> Join their glorious song.
сами в семье.
Sunday school, but a word of advice, stop giving Zeke coffee during Sunday school. <laughs> By failing to re realize the joke, he cannons on himself. It's actually convenient. Uh, uh, as you probably heard in the prayer, the pastor who had received the call of Broken Bow has returned it, and they will be meeting a week from this Thursday to decide what direction they are going to go forward. And that's all I'm going to say about that for about the next week and a half. So, that's the announcement on the Broken Bow Front. There will be a Catholic Society meeting after church here in the sanctuary. Yeah, here. So, Catholic women stay here in church. Stay in church, people. Um, other than that, I don't have much by way of announcements. Oh, one thing I would like to crowdsource some ideas on. We could we have a new parking lot, and I'm pretty sure you all saw that, right? Which provides us with an opportunity to reach out to a fairly captive audience during the week. And so we've had a couple of ideas brought to me. First of all, one of those little free library type stands that you see covered around town here, filled with religious type books, some with kids type books, some are leftover forward in Christ or meditations that people can take, that sort of thing. And then putting up a bulletin board with announcements. Ostensibly, if anyone asks, the announcements are for you guys. But they happen to be publicly displayed so that whomever may want to read what's going on in our church has the opportunity to do that. And then we will advertise things like dinners and outdoor services, things that the public might be invited to. What the service is going to be this week, that sort of thing. So. Those are the two ideas I have. If you have other ways to reach out to the parents and teachers who park on what is essentially our property every day, let me know. One request. If you want to let me know today, write it somewhere. Because I will forget it if you simply tell it to me. Email's fine as well. Other than that, I have no announcements. You have anything? Seeing nothing? May God bless your week. I'll see you in the back. <laughs>
Especially the 18th, the 19th. The 18th, or, oh, that's, that's, that's a day off for sure. I could, I could ask for the 19th. Okay, well, I'm sure she is. Um, the 18th is what we're going to say. And um, I did say okay. On the 18th and 19th of October, there's uh, a pastor's conference. Okay. And um, we need to do the meeting. Where are we meeting up front? And, um, <laughs> they said upstairs. We were seeing somebody that's coming out. You died on that. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure if it's going to be a good one. Startles you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> one possibility might be maybe to have to go get a lasagna for somebody that baked one, but I don't know. Okay, yeah. I, I can let you know. Just, just, I can second up or something. I worked on that. Okay. Let's okay. okay. yeah. go fast. Then we won't yeah. worry about it. Yeah. The banker hours. Right. Right. Well, that's what I'm going to pay down. Well, that's what I'm going to pay Okay.
limitations or kind of making her sick. So, um, she, she read me the treasurer's report on the phone last night. 